What's up, YouTube? Hefe coming to you, Captain Awesome's Fish Room. Having a blast today. Just super stoked. Doing water changes. Can be as loud as I want. Can be obnoxious as I want because the wifey and the baby went over to Grandpa's house. And you know what that means, guys. Just having a blast. A good time. Uh, if you're not having a blast inside your fish room or with your fish tank, this may not be for you because I have a blast every time I walk in here. I'm just super, super excited. Can't beat it. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go over my CO2 system, guys. I uh, had a few question on them, or questions on it uh, as to whether I was worried about the back pressure blowing off one of the lines or something like that. So I'm going to go over it in detail, and hopefully that gets everybody's questions answered. Uh, so we're going to start with the CO2 generator itself, which is just a, a big apple juice bottle. It uh, has my CO2 mix in it, um, which I showed y'all a couple videos back. A uh, small little hole drilled up here. It's actually way smaller than the airline tubing, so it makes a really snug fit. No leaks there. Uh, it's not watertight, guys. It is airtight, though, so I don't, I'm not worried about it being watertight. So the CO2 that's produced inside this jug travels through this line up into my check valve. Or, I'm sorry, I keep wanting to call it a, well, it is a check valve, but uh, check valve slash bubble counter. Um, now, how I did this is I took a plunger out of a syringe uh, that, you know, this check valve could fit into snugly, okay? This check valve is stuck in there so tight, I put it in there so tight, I needed pliers to get it out to, uh, you know, make a few adjustments and stuff like that. So it's not going anywhere, and even if it, there was a possibility of it popping out like that, it's actually siliconed right here too, up inside there and then on the outside. So it's silicone, silicone, and this part is watertight. Uh, no leaks. I, it's been running all morning, so, I mean, it's watertight, guys. Um, I also have these little uh, clamps that you use inside uh, uh, drip irrigation systems. Um, let me see if I have another one so I can show y'all what it looks like. Yeah, sure do. Uh, it's kind of like an advanced zip tie, really. Uh, it's this little thing here, um, and you you put it over, if I can get the damn thing to focus, there we go. If you put it over the tube onto what you want to clamp it on, and then you just push it together like that, uh, well, y'all get, get the point. Uh, but it clamps around there, makes a, you know, makes it really tight fit, so... Uh, you know, I'm not worried about back pressure popping this line, and then also have one up here on the top of the syringe. So, uh, you know, I'm not worried about the pressure popping on that. Uh, from there, it goes up through the through the tube on the other side, up into another check valve, um, and then another another piece of line running to a little doohickey that uh, injects the CO2. This is, this is what it is. Oh, that's what it is right here, guys. Um, that little tube right there is connected to the tube from the CO2 generator, uh, and that's what it, what's injecting the CO2 into the diffuser. So, let me explain this check valve. Uh, this check valve is in place uh, just in case, uh, you know, CO2 gets low, I haven't changed it out in a while, um, and the pressure from the bottle isn't actually keeping the water that can come up through this at bay. So what's going to happen is if I don't change this in time and, and the pressure drops on the CO2 bottle, that water will only be able to go up to here, okay? So I'm not going to have to worry about a whole airline full of water uh, if I forget, you know? So all I have to do is, you know, simply disconnect right here, take this down, remix my concoction, plug it back up to there, and then, you know, it'll push that water out itself, uh, okay? Okay. Um, from there, the CO2 travels through this line. Um, well, actually, here, let's start off with the pump now. Um, that's how the CO2 generator works. Uh, the second part of this system starts with this pump right here. Uh, it's, a, it's a little over, I believe, 100 gallons an hour, uh, pumping water through that tube up to this little doohickey here, uh, which just connects right there. You can see that. Uh, into a ball valve fitting um, and that's great too guys because if I want to you know turn it off to do some maintenance or something I can just pop it pop it and good um, the CO2 is being injected through there that pump is pushing water through here so that's carrying the CO2 bubbles down through here through another ball valve down and then let me get my flashlight 
show y'all right there that little tube in the middle you can see you can kind of see all those bubbles going through it it's pushing it down there goes all the way down to the bottom and you might be able to see the vortex that it's creating down there with all those bubbles rolling around uh, then they come up through the bio balls okay um, so the it's starting to be dissolved down here because those bubbles are churning and churning and churning until they go through these holes uh, up through the bio media which um, I'm using as a you know a, a, a CO2 dissolved media <laughs> um, it's still gonna hold nitrifying bacteria uh, but you know the main purpose here is you can see how those bubbles are uh, you know popping up everywhere in there uh, that's good those bubbles will stick there and they'll actually dissolve in the water that's being pushed through here um, and as you can see there's not many bubbles coming out of that top uh, tray right here not the center guys but the tray you can't see that many bubbles coming through so I'm getting about 90-95 percent of uh, dissolved CO2 uh, with this method with this method here it's very very efficient and then uh, you know once it goes through there it gets all chopped up uh, and all the CO2 gets uh, dissolved then it comes up through this line and then back into the aquarium right there and you can see you know there's only a few bubbles coming in there and you saw how many were being pumped into it so uh, that's how it's working guys um, you know it's it's a great system I've used it in the past uh, except I didn't use this I used a different uh, I used uh, what was I uh, it was a gravel vac, I think 11 inch, and hold on guys, I gotta do the, I'm doing water changes too, apologize, but uh, I used a, I used a gravel vac just like this right here, uh, I capped it on both ends with uh, PVC, and what I actually did is it, in, instead of putting media in it, I inverted it to where the CO2 goes in then at the bottom, but the water's being pushed in through the top, just like this concept here. Water's being pushed in down, and I had the CO2 coming in at the bottom, so it would create a vortex up at the top of that, and it would just constantly dissolve, 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 and then water without bubbles in it was being pushed out of the bottom back into the tank, um, like with, with another tube. So uh, that's how that one worked. Uh, I wanted to try this. I love the inline method. I think it's the most efficient method, uh, unless you're using one of those uh, membranes or one of those atomic diffusers that prevent or that produce uh, like micro fine bubbles that actually looks like smoke. Uh, those are good too. I love the inline method though. One, it looks cool. Two, it's very, very efficient. And three, it's easy to do DIY, okay? You can't really make one of those atomic diffusers. It's going to be kind of difficult. But, yeah, so we're getting about one and a half, two bubbles a second uh, being pumped in there. And, guys, that's that's just a guesstimate. Um, you know, you can't be really precise with these DIY systems. Um, you know, there's no needle valve. There's no pressure valve or anything like that. Now, you can do DIY like that. You can go out and buy a little pressure valve, hook it up. I mean, but you're still going to have to change your mix um, until you get a pressurized system. Um, and then when I do get my pressurized system, I'll still be using this inline method. It's, I mean, that's how efficient it is, guys. Really, really efficient. Um, but the only thing that's inside that uh, reactor right there is bio balls. And that's what's, you know, dissolving the CO2. Uh, by it sticking to the bio balls, the water's constantly passing through it. And uh, in that way, it actually dissolves uh, much more efficiently. Um, but, yeah, guys, that's what I'm doing. Um, you know, just doing water changes, having a blast. Hope y'all are having a blast, too. Hope everybody had a wonderful Sunday. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. As we look at the another or the next batch of the F1 Jag babies coming up. And we'll see y'all next time, folks. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Adios.